Hello and welcome to Learning in Technology. My name is Frank and I'm glad that you're here. In this video, I'm going to look at Microsoft Teams administration, but I'm going to look at it from a very high level. I'm going to look at it from the standpoint of an IT department or a tenant administrator. There are three different levels of administration when it comes to Microsoft Teams. There's the IT level of administration, which is putting together all your settings for your entire environment. Then there's the team owner or the instructor settings for somebody who's created a team and somebody who needs to work within the team environment. And then there's finally the user that, who can go and set preferences and different settings that will affect the way that they interact with teams. Now I have a lot of videos on this channel that deal with user and team owner type of administration. So you can check those out. So why would you be interested in a video about IT department or tenant level administration? You might not have any access to that level of administration. In fact, chances are you don't. So it's been nice seeing you here. If, if that's not of interest to you, you should probably watch a different video somewhere, but maybe you're interested in knowing what these settings are so that you can have a meaningful dialogue. If something's not working in your environment and you've exhausted all of the possibilities that you can think of, maybe it's actually something that's just not possible in your environment because of a higher level administrative setting. And then you can talk to your IT department or whoever supports your Office 365 environment and you can ask them to check their settings. Maybe you could uh, share this video with them if you say, how come we can't, for example, put backgrounds on Teams and I'll show you exactly where that might be in the high level tenant level administration settings. So if you like this video, hit like and uh, subscribe for maybe more videos that are user centric, but I'll do a few videos that are more technical like this. And um, obviously share this video with anybody, including your IT department or your tenant administrator that uh, might benefit from knowing where these settings are. Let's go have a look. The first thing to understand is that you'll have to have administrative access in order to get to these settings. I've logged into office.com using my account. And up here, I have my tiles, my app selector, and you'll know if you have administrative settings, if you click on the admin, if you don't have this particular uh, tile, then you do not have access to administrative settings. If you don't see it right away, you can go to all apps and you can have a look and see if it's in there. But in my case, of course, because I do a lot of administration, I actually have it right here on my on my tiles. So I go into admin and this is going to open up my administrative settings. And when I go to my administrative settings, all of the different administration settings or centers will be down the side here. And you'll notice that I have teams already selected here. I can go into other administration centers like my exchange server and such. And you can see here, it gives me some overview. I've got a very small client here as a, as an end user, but I do have full administrative controls over it. So if I go into teams, when I go into my teams environment, it'll go into my teams administrative center. Let's have a look at some of the settings here. Now, one of the things you might see is whether there's an upgrade available. In my case, if I just refresh this, you'll see it actually upgraded last year, but you can go in and, and upgrade it so that your Skype is now part of Teams. So you upgrade basically Teams is the next evolution of Skype with a whole lot more, sort of like Skype plus SharePoint. And well, there's a whole architectural story behind that. So down here, you can see all of the different types of settings that can be part of my Teams environment. I'm not going to go through all of them in this video, so I'm not going to do, for example, the voice elements of this. I just want to look at a few of those uh, settings that really affect Teams members that are using it for a classroom or using it for a group work type of setting. And maybe if there's something you can't do, it's because something here has not been set. So if I go into Teams here, you'll notice I can manage my Teams and my team policies, and then I can update and there's uh, templates here as well. So if I go into my manage my Teams, it'll show you all of the teams that I currently have that are part of this tenant. So I've got a, two teams that are here and I can actually go in and I, as an administrator, can go in and edit all of the different settings in terms of who's a member. I can work with the channels and I have a settings button here that will allow me to go in and do things. For example, do I allow people to edit sent messages? Notice that it's currently on. Do I allow you to delete a sent message? So these are all the settings. So if as an end user, if I go to try and edit a message that I've sent, and I can't edit it, it could be that it's turned off here. 
and then I could contact my IT department or I could contact my um, service provider, whoever is taking care of my particular uh, team, and I will be able to have them go in and administer it. Team policies is interesting because here you'll have a global policy and that global policy will have a number of settings in it. And what you'll do with the global policy is set this up so that any team created for this tenant is going to have these policies. I'll go in here and you'll notice that here, can they create private channels? That is set to on. And if you go into, you can add other policies in here and you can assign that policy to specific groups. Um, I, there's a little more to it than that, but the point here is that there is this global policy that will affect how all of my teams behave and I can create custom policies. So that might also be blocking you. The update policies in terms of uh, pre-release features and previews of, of team environments. So here, if I go into global settings, you'll notice that here I've got show preview features turned on. So if you're going into tutorials and you see a feature, you try to use that feature and it's not available, it might be that your preview features are not turned on and by default they're not. So I've turned mine on so that I'm trying to get the latest features as soon as they come out so I can make these videos for you guys. So I've got show preview features and I've got that turned to on. Uh, again, I can go into my templates and I can actually create a whole series of templates that can be used in my environment. Now, right now, there's a whole bunch of built-in templates and these are all related to uh, a tenant that is a business tenant. So I'm a business person with this particular uh, uh, tenant. There's also, if I was in an educational tenant, there'd be a whole bunch of educational ones in here and you can actually create your own templates. So let's say you have a certain type of team that you create on a regular basis, let's say to work on a specific type of project. So let's say you're an organization that say has restaurant projects. You can see here, there's no restaurant project here, but you could build your own restaurant template so you could use an existing team to build it off of, start with an existing template and expand upon it or create a brand new template. So these templates are, are really a handy way of creating sort of a custom team that all of your uh, uh, team owners will be able, when they're creating a team, if they have permission to create a team, will be able to use your templates. So that's teams as a general rule and just a few of the different settings that are useful there. I'm not gonna do devices, locations or users. Let's go into meetings. If I go into meetings, I can set meeting policies. And you'll notice that here, there's a number of policies that are here. And let's go into the global policy. And again, these are these, this is really where you start seeing a lot of settings that users can all of a sudden not be able to do something because of something here. So notice right now, I'm allowing people to meet now in all channels. That can be turned off. Do I allow the Outlook add-in? So let's say you're trying to use the Outlook add-in. It's not working. Maybe this is turned off by your global administrator, your tenant administrator. Do you allow people to schedule meetings, private meetings? Do you allow transcription? Uh, do you allow recording? This is one that I get a lot of comments on. People say, I can't record a meeting. How come? Well, because that may be turned off. And then you can also go in and in terms of uh, IP protocol audio and video, whether you allow outcoming and incoming uh, coming audio. Um, and so there's some stuff with streaming. Uh, streaming is really related to if you have lower level uh, internet connections. So you can do some sort of work where you maybe don't allow video or maybe you limit the amount of bandwidth. So again, a little beyond the scope of this video, but just be aware that you can ask your administrator to check some of these settings if you're having problems in those areas. Content sharing is a big one. This is one where people say, I can't share my screen. Well, why can't you share your screen? It could be that the team owner doesn't allow you to. And if you go to the team owner and say, hey, can, you, can I share the screen? The team owner says, I can't let you share the screen. It could be that nobody's allowed to share the screen or you can do whether they're only allowed to share a single application at a time or whether it's disabled altogether. Um, again, with things like requesting controls or giving you an external participant, like a guest, the ability to take control. Do you allow PowerPoint sharing? Do you allow the whiteboard and do you allow shared notes? So these are all things that are set at this very high level. 
Normally the way that I'll configure a client is I'll allow everything to sort of occur at the high level and then rely on the team owners to restrict anything that they need to restrict. It's pretty rare that you have something you want to restrict for the entire organization because be aware, this affects the entire organization. This is one, let anonymous people start a meeting. Don't really want that. Um, in this case here, the roles have, that have pre um, presenter rights, everyone has the ability to present, but a user can stop from somebody from being a presenter, or I can have it, you know, in this case, only people in my organization, so no guests can present, and everyone and the user can override it. So the organizers, so you have the or organizers and the users can override, uh, and admit people. So this is where we have something called the lobby. So here, everybody in the organization, if they join a meeting, will automatically join the meeting. I can have it set up so that uh, everyone can join immediately. Uh, anyone in my organization and anything that's federated through my identity services can join in or just the organizer can go automatically and has to allow everybody to come in uh, through the lobby, has to authorize access. So allow meet now in private groups again, live captioning by default is disabled, but the user can override. If you turn that on or you can disable it altogether, you d that's one that you wouldn't want to be automatic. So it's either disabled and you can override it or it's disabled. Allow chat in meetings. Again, you can disable that so that when you're in a meeting, you can't have the chat to the side. Underneath the meeting settings here, we have a number of settings that can also be pretty important for us. Just take a few seconds, here we go. So anonymous users can join the meeting. I can turn that off so that if I'm having, you know, I don't want anybody getting the meeting code and joining in. And so I can turn off that anonymous access. And here you can do some, you know, some sort of fancy things here. If you want to go in when you're sending an email invitation, you can go in and do things like have a nice logo and legal stuff. And the, you know, the, it's not that exciting here, but if you go in and if I actually put in a nice logo, then it will actually, you know, fancy this up a little bit. Okay, in terms of the network, I can have quality of service markers in there so I know what sort of quality I'm getting in terms of my network. This is usually used, in my case, I use this for troubleshooting. So I'll turn that on if I'm having media problems and turn it off when I'm not really in need of getting that information. And then you can also specify different ports. This is a bit more advanced from a networking. Um, I'm not gonna go through live events, but you can hold live events in Microsoft meetings as well. And, uh, and you can put some settings in there as well. In terms of users, it's just gonna give me the users that I have that are able to manage and what they're allowed to do. You can see I have a whole bunch of fake users in here that are kind of designed to uh, to just give me some you know information and there's so Albert Einstein for example if I look at Albert Einstein's policies and what he's allowed to do right I can see you know the policies that they're allowed to work with um, again you know I, I don't want to do absolutely everything here but I did want to do teams and talk about that and I wanted to talk about meetings talk about that the other one is well we can go messaging policies so messaging policies again we have a global messaging policy Let's grab that and you can see what's happening here. Owners can delete sent messages, whether that's on or off. Um, you can do things whether you have read receipts, uh, it's user controlled where they send it, chat. So, you know, uh, this is a good one. The, the GIFs, so the Giphy, you know, whether you're allowing GIFs and you can have some sort of, you know, in a classroom environment, I might want to be pretty strict in terms of the content ratings so that there's no questionable Giphys in there. Um, or I can turn them off altogether if the, you know, if, if, in the organization, if people are having problems, remembering again that the team owner can turn these on and off, but maybe I don't want them for the organization at all. So a lot of things like URL previews, um, a lot of interesting immersive reader. So these are all interesting settings that can control things like whether I'm allowed to use user memes, stickers, URL previews, translation, immersive reader. Um, you know, priority notifications on urgent messages, voice messages are allowed in chats and channels or only chats or disabled, uh, mobile devices, right? Uh, display your favorite channels above your chats. You can turn that on and now your mobile device will show you your favorite channels uh, up above your recent chats. I'm gonna actually put that on for fun. Um, I can remove users from group chats, whether I'm able to do that. And it also can give you suggested replies. I can turn that on or off. I'm gonna save that because I've got that little mobile change that I just made. Um, the next thing I'm gonna take a look at here, really this is 
where I'm going to go is I'm going to go into my Teams planning. I'm going to manage my apps. Here's where if there's an app that I want to use and I'm not seeing it, it could be that it's not on the approved list. Now, in my case, my organizational wide settings, I'm allowing all of the apps to come in from Microsoft, the third party apps. And when they get published in the store, I'm actually going to allow them to show up. So I want I want to be basically able to see any possible apps. But if that becomes cluttered or if it's something that's causing an issue in your organization, you can actually go through here and you can choose to remove apps that you don't want the users even seeing. You can also upload your own custom apps if you have an organization that does any type of development. Uh, in terms of permission policies, pop in here. This is the permission to the apps. So going to the global app permission, do I allow apps? That's what you just saw on the side a few moments ago. Um, same with the setup policies, right? And you can see here that under the policies here, what apps are installed, add apps that you want to install, right? So those get installed. Uh, users can pin them. They're allowed to upload custom apps. So will they be able to upload their own custom apps? Of course, that could be a security issue if you have somebody that's, uh, you know, building their own apps there. But uh, I can add apps that I want to install. And then I can choose in terms of how they're pinned on the navigation bar. So for example, you can, you can change, uh, if you want chat to be up a little bit higher here, I can choose chat and I can move it up. It takes priority over activity. I'm just going to keep them in their default order. Okay, so we'll cancel that. Um, the other thing is there are some voice policies and policy packages. Analytics and reports are, are good for your IT department. They can go in and they can have a look and see, you know, for example, user activity. So they can go in and have a look at the activity last seven days. This isn't going to be very much. My organization has two people in it. So you can see this is my user activity. There was some audio time because I held some meetings for a period of time while I was doing some video and you can see who was in there. Okay. Uh, organization wide settings, external access, whether anybody from external is allowed to come in and communicate on my team, right? Uh, guest access, what they're allowed to do, their level of control. Notice I do allow guests on team and then the team owner can choose what they're able to do. This is sort of the high level, but these again can be modified by the team owner. I'm just setting these for the organization. There are some other cool tools, like there's some teams advisors and network planners in there. There is uh, some tools in here in terms of setting up locations for reporting emergency addresses. Uh, one of the things you can do, let's say for example, you have everybody working from home. You could actually specify emergency addresses for people. Actually, I'm going to go out of that because I don't want to display my address, but you can go in and you can have emergency addresses. So if you're in a team meeting and somebody collapses, you can actually have emergency addresses so that you know where that person actually lives. That's kind of a handy thing. Um, hopefully, hopefully you never need it. Um, and then there's some other things that, you know, team rooms, there's some devices coming out, some cool team stuff coming out, but that should give you an overview. That should give you a feeling for some of the settings that are available at the administration level. And if you're having problems, especially with something like meetings, you know, if you go into your meetings and you go into your um, policies for your meetings and you find out that maybe you're in there and you're trying to do something like put the Outlook ad in on and it's not working, maybe your administrators turn that off. So maybe you could ask them, hey, has this been turned off at the tenant level? Because we're not seeming able, we're not able to uh, put this into our Outlook and we would really like to do that. Okay. Okay, so that was a pretty deep dive into the administrative settings at a very high level. Again, you're probably not going to be able to log in and see those settings, but it is nice to know what they are so that you can have that meaningful dialogue. If you want to see some other videos on working with teams as an end user or as a team owner, uh, there's some other uh, videos on this channel that'll help you with that, as well as a whole bunch of other topics. If there's any topics you'd like me to speak about, comment down below. I'm always happy to help out. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.